Hey guys, before we dive in, I wanted to discuss my latest course called Hello Rails. This course is about Ruby on Rails and it's about taking an app from an idea and turning it into a realistic production level app. So we'll talk about everything from installing Ruby on Rails to literally using front end frameworks to kind of enhance it, deploying the app, things like testing, talking about test driven development, all of those topics and more will be covered in this course. It is more of a beginner guide to get into the framework. So if you're a seasoned pro, this might not be for you, but my hope is that maybe you too could learn something from this course. This course is my attempt to transition what I've learned over the years and give back. So check out Hello Rails at hellorails.io or follow us on Twitter at hello underscore rails. If you have any questions or feedback from me, feel free to tell me personally, leave them comments on this channel, wherever you can find me, get at me. And with that, we will continue on. Hey everyone, welcome to the very next Let's Build with Ruby on Rails. This is an app based around the API around Ruby on Rails. So we're gonna actually be creating an app that is both Rails as the backend and Vue.js as the front end. So the app itself is pretty simple, but the idea behind it is using Rails as our way to authenticate and uh, store data, as well as display and modify it on the front end using Vue. So you see, normally on our Rails server, we're running localhost 3000, which I actually have running in the background we get some data that comes back we could restrict that to not happen like for instance if i go to like what will be our api route for like records and i'll explain this app a bit in a second um, we get an unauthorized so you can't actually access that route without being authenticated what are we building it's basically a record archive app so if you collect records it's a personal way to journal those um, so like I said, it's nothing much, but I wanted to give you a simple problem to solve using Vue.js and uh, Ruby on Rails in the back end. We have an interface here to add a new record a year uh, and then choose from available artists that exist. If one doesn't exist, you can go create one in a new route. That's all through Vue. This has nothing to do with Rails at this point, but we can still edit and delete uh, using the CRUD actions available to us from Rails. But thanks to Vue, everything's really quick and in line and updates really fast. So it's kind of nice to have both working together. So in essence, this is going to be an app that's two apps. Uh, so they both talk to each other in a sense. So we'll have the database version of Rails and everything going on in the back end on 3000 and then Vue.js will be 8081 on this host here. So everything really will take place on the Vue app, but behind the scenes, we have some magic going on with Rails where we're, we're posting and putting and deleting records from the database that actually live somewhere uh, because Vue itself is just a front end framework. It doesn't actually host any data but you can use it in such a way to talk to a, a place like Rails to do such a thing. So this has been a requested video. Um, I think I sent out a poll for it and it kind of came back as the crowd favorite. So I hope it meets your expectations. Um, it's kind of an in-depth video series. I guess hang in there is what my best uh, advice. Uh, but basically what we're gonna start with is configuring the Rails side of it first and then move to the front end side of it with Vue.js. So there will actually be two apps in one that is going to be the record store backend, and then I'll create a new directory that has all the Vue stuff in it uh, within the app. So this won't actually correlate to this exact app, but I'm just putting it here so it has a one home under one folder. You can feel free to move this outside and be two folders in your repo. Maybe you, you have something in Git and you want to version control them separately. It's totally cool. This is all in one. Uh, so feel free to separate those. We only make use of a couple of gems in this one. Um, Rack cores, which helps, uh, allows you to do uh, cross origin requests and specify the domain you want to allow and disallow. Uh, Redis for some background processing and JWT sessions. So JWT sessions is a gem that's like specifically based around token authentication. Uh, if you're coming from a strict Rails 
building app mentality. That's all cookie based sessions. And it's based around a, you know, something that gets saved in your browser. And here we're actually using token based authentication to do those things. And JSON web tokens allows us to do that. It gets pretty in depth setting this up. So um, I, I kind of stumbled along the way to make it my make it, you know, actually work on my end. But I think I got something that's in a decent state. So I'm also kind of new to view. It's not my framework I just reach for. I really don't reach for a framework these days and unless I absolutely need it. I feel like there's a lot of hype around them and they're, you know, for scalable apps and components, it makes sense. But sometimes you just don't need that stuff. Um, but I'll, I'll leave my opinions out of this. Uh, but essentially, this allows us to componentize everything here. So these all can be components if we wanted to. Uh, the form itself is a component, and then this list is a component. Each item is a component. Uh, so basically, we're going to add a record to the record store, and this is my own personal list that I can edit and modify uh, wherever I want. So you can change the actual artist if we need to. I don't know that you'd ever need to, but it's there. Uh, and then, you know, just go with the flow. So Hopefully that's a good overview. If not, um, we'll be digging in into the next video. So we're going to start again with the Rails backend and then move into the Vue.js frontend. So I will see you in the next video.